Hello folks and welcome back. Uh, just before today's video I just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone who's commented with suggestions uh, after the last video and thanks to everyone for watching uh, and also to uh, new subscribers as well as long-term ticket holders so thanks very much. Uh, so today's video is going to cover uh, just a bit of this getting the initial uh, paint base colour down uh, prior to doing any of the scatter materials. Uh, from the images you just see here I've just taken a few images uh, the, those were taken when the paint was wet so there's a bit of a shine on there but uh, hopefully this is just a base coat um, that I'm going to apply the scatter materials onto uh, so the idea is you won't really see it it's just if any of it uh, pops through uh, so yeah hopefully uh, get a bit more done soon and it should start uh, coming to more effect uh, so anyway hope you uh, enjoyed today's video and there'll be uh, another update coming fairly soon. Uh, in the meantime, thanks very much, as I say, for uh, everyone who's contributed to the last one. And enjoy the video. Bye for now. Hello folks, Paul here, UK Rails and More. Thought I'd just bring you uh, back for a little bit of a update, brief update really. Um, so yeah, the uh, I've had a few arrivals actually today, which... Uh, really pleased with. Um, for a while I've wanted to get hold of some of these the little Oxford die-cast uh, vehicles, a Parcel Force uh, Land Rover, the old transit van, a white transit van, uh, and there's a Jaguar X-Type actually. Um, so yeah, I thought these will be uh, really help with the uh, scale, and I must admit they've been missing really. Uh, having gone from an N-gauge layout previously, to uh, now going back to double O, which was the first layout uh, with some of these old coaches and things had on that. Uh, but yeah, it's been uh, a little bit of an adjustment to make, really calibrating the difference in uh, scale and just certainly with a landscaping, how much room you've got with everything or how little room compared to when you're working with N. So I thought these are really, uh, you know, you can work out the scale in a normal way, but visually, they really just give you an idea of the different heights of the viaducts and things like that and they're really going to help with the scale uh, so even here this little lane or road that immediately kind of gives us a better idea a better judgment of how that bridge is and what kind of span there's going to be for that bit so yeah really pleased with that um, other things i've got uh, some hedging as well a couple of different colors uh, uh, they're all it's pretty much all gauge master stuff this uh, I thought I'll just go with one and then get uh, stuff and I've, I've used uh, Scenics before and was quite pleased with them uh, and then yeah there's a, a load just a load of different uh, coloured scatters and things like that I've not got any static grass as yet but that's something I may well consider using in the future um, and I've also got a couple of different colours of ballast as well so there's the uh, the granite ballast which is quite a popular one and then I've got the uh, the brown one as well, brown ballast, so I don't know how you can see those, so I'll use those uh, as well. But I'm also quite impressed with the, the coffee as well, and the actual, when it's done properly, it's a very similar kind of grain size to these ballasts anyway. So I probably will use that, because I think, you know, probably use the uh, these ballasts on the top section, maybe in different places, and kind of... Uh, you know combining them a bit for where repairs will have been carried out things like that as you see on the real world railways uh, but yeah i think that color certainly some of the lines around places like east didsbury and places like that uh, and around manchester stockport for those who know uh it's a very good color match that that kind of ready oxide and it has the guess to say better than that in some places for you know old ballast um, but yeah, really pleased with those and I've got uh, a couple of uh, boxes of the fine scale uh, track as well. The uh, I've just gone for the wooden sleeper type uh, to be honest with you because I really find that uh, when it's when it's all ballasted and that I, I don't really notice that much of a difference with it to be honest with you. So uh, I'm kind of happy with that. Um, so yeah, uh, that will the uh, hopefully there should be enough track there to run the return loops that I mentioned in one of the earlier videos uh, so that basically as I build this up scenically I'll be able to put another two boards at either end of this one river module 
uh, and then I'll be able to configure it so that I've got a couple of loops. Uh, the idea is that the uh, lower two lines, they will run through as two lines and then they will just uh, completely loop around and then run around the back to return the trains up to the other end where they'll come around and then the top line, this is basically the, uh, the up line effectively, is going to loop round just off shot there and then it's going to come back round on itself to return the train in this direction and then there'll be another two loops coming back to return it. So effectively you'll have one, one train running on the top for now anyway. Uh, when I develop this further and I build up the other modules the idea is that there'll be two uh, running trains on the top Peak Forest type line, uh, freight mainly freight line and possibly a bit of preservation and then on the lower line there'll be another two trains and that'll be more kind of uh, passenger express uh, etc and, and kind of container freight that kind of thing is my idea for the lower lines and that will be kind of peak forest type uh, quarry lines on the top so yeah those are the uh, the scenics that I'm pleased with because that means I can actually make a, a start now on uh, bringing things to life a little bit more um, but there's still quite a bit of work to do uh, in any case as you can see but hopefully I'll be able to make some progress on this uh, you see from the last video uh, I was doing the if I just move these out of the, out of the way a little bit uh, on the last video I was building up the uh, landscape from this lower embankment here and then just putting some uh, mold, molding that basically into a bit of possible waste ground or field and then also the banking on the other side that runs up to that upper level line so I was doing that on this side I just thought I'd try it with uh, paper mache wallpaper mix with the strips of paper and here again uh, I'm really pleased at that how that's worked out actually that was the wallpaper mix uh, and basically it's only about I'd say probably about three or four layers of newspaper at max and you can see it's it's pretty solid in most places yeah there's the odd bit where it's just around here where I've made adjustments but I think that's going to be fine to be quite honest with you I was thinking about building it up a bit more but even even here it's really uh, really pleased with that um, so yeah that's a good uh, thing and then on the other side as well this is the stuff I've done with the PVA glue uh, with just a very slight water mix in that I, th I think I think they're very very slight just add a little bit but again that's really solid and it's only yeah there's a bit of flex there but that's where it was finished off so there's not much where it's built up here a bit more with kind of four five layers maybe max um, but yeah really pleased with that even even that and I think it's just taking shape a little bit more now so another job to do is to continue that uh, this more realistic on the on the basic foundation stuff over there that I did just to give you me a general idea and I want to kind of just bring this bank down so it's a bit less steep and um, some of the bankings are going to be uh, where required uh, reinforced with that kind of steel work that you get uh, so there's going to be some uh, some bankings put on this side probably to protect the embankment where I'm going to do that and that'll be painted to kind of look like a realistic type rust colour um, and then yeah the other things I'm going to be doing is painting uh, this green so that I've got a bit of a base colour just for um, prior to doing the scatter uh, so that if there's any uh, little bits and blemishes it doesn't look like just out of a place where you've got the newspaper coming through um, so yeah idea is really continue doing that uh, next jobs will be to continue the banking on the other side um, and then then it'll be uh, which I'm probably going to do uh, I'll get done in a moment is to actually get these banks up to here probably get those painted so we can make a start and this painted as well this side just uh, so we can start coming to life a little bit and then I can actually make a start on the uh, the scatter when that paint's dried with just uh, PVA mix again so yeah i'll uh bring you back in a little bit bye for now i just noticed as i was putting these uh bags away that this the gauge master dark green scatter is an uncanny uh resemblance really color wise of the uh the wicks dark green paint that i've got there so 
Uh, I'm really pleased with that because that's a kind of base colour so that should hide any little blemishes and uh, things quite well. So yeah, pleased with that. Okay folks, so yeah, uh, that's the paint I'm using. It's just the uh, the Wix own brand stuff. Estate Green it's called. And yeah, very good uh, match. So just been uh, doing that. I always think it's a, one of the rewarding points really when you start actually putting the, the paint on it really starts bringing it to life uh, and you get to see really the the shape of the different uh, contours and see how it how it looks what you've started to put together uh, and then obviously uh, another great point is then putting the scatter material on afterwards so I thought get the paint on if there's any minor adjustments uh, I can make it but I'm happy with little bits you know, with unevenness because it's just the kind of thing you get in the, the real world unless it's like a, a very manicured kind of uh, lawn area. So yeah, I'll uh, carry on with that and bring you back in a bit. Bye for now. Okay, folks, welcome back. So uh, yeah, that was just a quick job really of uh, painting those, just took sort of 10 minutes if, uh, if that. Um, but yeah, quite uh, pleased it already. Overall, just obviously it needs all the detail in doing, but uh, but yeah, it already gives just a bit more of a an idea of how the lay of the land is going to be with the viaduct going over the top. That's going to be a, a metal bridge in the middle there with a further stanchion underneath it, probably midway, slightly in the river. And then with the lower level embankment here with some little farm track access. So I'll just give you a bit of a show around in a moment but just looking at that i'm quite pleased um over here as well i've actually i don't know how well it's going to pick it up on the camera but i'd actually i've decided to just paint over that brown dried out uh coffee that had uh i'd done i'm quite pleased it's given it a bit of a an effect really that i think the uh scatter is going to help possibly help it stick to a little bit better as well with it being a, a steeper slope there so just something you learn as you go along really different methods that may be useful so yeah i'll just try and uh, take a few uh or a bit of footage just showing some of the different v viewpoints really just to see how that looks especially for anyone who's not seen the video before this is uh the river module and it's going to be one of a number of different modules probably about six i'm going to do that eventually will all fit together to form kind of a much larger decent layout really that rather than just doing it all in one go and building it up in stages so this should give some good views for filming uh, i will be getting the trains going running as soon as i can with the return loops i mentioned but then yeah i've just built up that area of land and i think that's gonna should look okay once i've got the um you know various bushes and things on there and uh, the scatter material on there and possibly Maybe some uh, different foliage type for the uh, embankment. Usually those look quite different uh, to the actual land surrounding them. Uh, and then another idea of what I was going to do on here, which I've seen before in the real world, is where the ballast actually overflows at points where they've either put a bit too much on or they've done, there's been some erosion, they've done some repairs. And uh, you'll get the ballast, ballast actually flowing down the side of the embankment in places as well. So I thought that would be quite a good feature so this is the lower level and then i've got that road there and i don't know how well it shows on the camera but that road actually is an incline up towards higher ground and then we've got this steep banking going up to the higher level embankment there uh, so there's the upper line a few of those vehicles that will be used for scale and to help with that and then that upper peak forest line crosses over the, uh, the lower level main line and then going over to the other side where the river runs through the other idea was to uh, I have actually I didn't mention but I've bought some uh, back scenes as well just plain sky back, uh, back scenes uh, just to see how they work um, potentially I will maybe do uh, consider having a bit of a you know, a, a kind of a view in the back scene as well. But I thought just for now, I'll see how it looks with the sky. So it focuses in on the actual layout itself. 
and then over there we've got the steeper bankings going down to the river and then that that's either going to be a, a road or a farm track or something maybe a single track road that's got the potential to still to be a double double size when i'm looking at the scale of these quite a narrow one you'd probably get a couple of vehicles pass there or possibly what you see some places where you'll have the uh, the opening is just wide enough for one vehicle maybe a much smaller opening and then you'll have a traffic light system uh, but again i'm trying not to get too carried away with that and it looking out of place on this particular scene uh, part of the plan is that uh, the next module along to the left will be a station as well sort of a fairly rural type uh, station but again maybe slightly suburban or just gonna have to see how it builds up um, and that's going to be a two line with one passing loop with an island platform in that loop as well and fair uh, decided with that one and that'll probably be still on part of it on embankments for the first part and then uh, as the land raises up again uh, that will be uh, it'll, it'll be going to eventually into sort of cuttings and then potentially a tunnel as well uh, at that stage and then other things i've got to work out is the river as well um either when the river goes on to the next module because it runs lengthways at this stage that river's going to then go off now it's either going to go off to the right uh up that way and then there'll be the upper line is going to cross a further viaduct that will take it back over that river uh, or it's going to go to the left and effectively go be diverted underneath the platforms which again is something you uh you do see quite a bit where uh, the uh, the railways built up and rivers and stuff go underneath shopping precincts and uh, and stations and things like that. So uh, yeah, that's another another option where I'll get it going underneath again and it come out here somewhere on the on the left hand side. So yeah, a few uh, few future ideas, but at the moment it'll be good to when this is dried for the next video. I'll start just trying to build up some little scenic spots and just start seeing how they look and see what those uh, rusty skills at doing the scenery are like after all this time uh, and then of course it'll be a case of Reed continuing to do the the paper mache building up of the uh, the far bank there as well and then another project in itself is what's going to be going on on this side and whether that's uh, the, the uh, underpath or the under road that comes under here where that's going to go to there is it going to be a little little track that maybe that just gives access to the uh the river a bit further along or a little uh farm track or something like that so yeah hope you've uh enjoyed that video and um yeah as always if you're interested in following the progress if you uh press the subscribe button and if you press the notification bell you'll be notified of any future videos i do um if you've enjoyed it then please give it a like uh, and as always, any comments I'll reply to. Um, but in any case, if you've just watched it and you've watched it to the end, then thanks very much for watching. Really appreciate that. And I'll bring you back on the next one. Bye for now.